What's up guys, welcome back to another Frostpunk video and this is Golozo Gamer, the local lore librarian. Today we'll be discussing some concepts, some news, some ideas and more about the mode that you all are waiting for and interested in. The Endurance Mode. The Endurance Mode, as I've said in many videos before, is 11-bit studios answer to a request of having an endless mode by the community. And so they're going to put in their ideas. But the Endurance Mode shouldn't be just a flat-out scenario where, oh, I'm just going to build this or... It needs to have a well-developed tech tree. Seen as now you're going to be in the process of surviving the storm long term, there needs to be a method of advancing into an aerotype system where you can 1. Develop technologies from excavating the Tesla city and to an extent winter home and some of the land dreadnoughts within the frostland to create a new and more advanced civilization capable of withstanding the storm so the storm is no longer the biggest threat in the game but instead it is a emerging and continuing effect and stress test of your ability to micromanage the citizens of your city so when the storm rolls in it can disable the ability to scavenge for food and it can disable your ability to explore the frost land and a few other things and a lot of the machinery that you might have operating within the frost land might have to be called back so i'm thinking that you cannot just go to an outpost and set it up you can also visit the outpost and do add-ons and construct buildings there and then you can have a mobile outpost in the form of a reconstructed land dreadnought those are just a few of the ideas in addition to that the society and the purpose set of laws needs to become more complex so in the first aspect of the game you are able to either select one or two but as the city evolves into a much more complex design requiring both law and order representing an actual idea of a civilization that has now evolved far beyond the perspectives of trying to survive and is more in a direction of trying to adapt and merge certain elements of human characteristics into the, the structure of the societal needs and demands and so you have a mixture of religion and policing and so it turns it turns the tables as to how you can govern your city and makes the game a little more exciting and interesting and unique but all of these capabilities are only unlocked once you have survived the technological stone age setting of survival so after you have achieved surviving the storm the frostland opens up but then 11 bit studios can say okay the frostland has opened up we now need to make the frostland into a frost region and then there could be a global map and so the airships would come into the frost region and the global map and the land dreadnoughts can operate as transportation systems that can exchange resources between cities and the land dreadnoughts can also be specialized to do various tasks like setting up mobile outposts that can be used to scavenge for resources and then mine the resources and carry them back to the city there might also be new forms of resources within the game like geothermal energy coal is already there but clean coal in the sense of more refined ways of extracting it more efficiently and the discovery of oil or the rediscovery of oil and the use of oil as a means of another fuel source in keeping with the generators or they might just stick with coal and just use the oil for something else but these technologies can be scavenged from within the frostland and carried back to the city there might also be the creation of uh, as i would call it flying machines as i mentioned earlier the flying machines can be used to as i said explore the frost region 
combined with you building a radio tower. So in order to be able to build flying machines, you'll need to have an operational beacon, research the radio tower, and then find the designs for the flying machines within the frostland, research it, and then build the machine, build the radio tower, and then you can have a larger reach with your beacon because now the beacon can actually operate as almost like a airport hub center that the airship can now come back to. We already have airships that fly around the frostland but they're not built to actually go beyond where it is. So these new airships might be able to travel much further explore other regions and mark those regions for occupation and then resources can either be flown in in small amounts or a land dreadnought could attempt a journey towards that area and in that journey throughout the time there are notifications saying hey you know we need we need to check this out something is wrong the land dreadnought needs to break for a moment we need to excavate something here there's a roadblock you know so the dreadnoughts take on a much more technologically advanced and interesting aspect of the game. As I've seen this game have a total war Attila kind of map setting, so it would inevitably be interesting and amazing to see 11 bit Studios open the game up on such a larger scale. It makes no sense to just end it there, and it's much better to keep on expanding. With this expanded Frostland, they could also tell tons and tons of more stories that would allow me as the local lore librarian to introduce even more content to viewers who are interested in the game's lore and like the content that I produce. Well, I'll see you guys in the next one. This is Goloso Gamer signing off.